bye, 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 bye. <laughs> hey, uh, arm wrestlers of the universe, it is Matthew coming at you with some Beavis and Butthead action. Um, feeling a little loopy tonight, but I'll try and bring it down for this video. Um, I'm here to talk to you about lots of things. Lots of things. Uh, but they all tie together. Uh, the first thing is going to be PEDs in arm wrestling. You've heard the raging discourse, and I'm here to give my two cents on that. And from there, we're going to kind of connect to some life extension type stuff. We're going to talk about the philosophies of Brian Johnson, you know, the immortality guy, the most tested man on earth. Uh, and then we're going to connect him to the philosophies of Devin Larratt, whom we all know and love. Uh, his immortality thoughts, his life is a wave type thoughts. And we're going to connect to Devin. And I'm going to cap it off with a reaction, sort of a reaction, verbal reaction to Devin Larratt's recent painting stream, which I thought was really cool. And it had some cool ideas about Valhalla and uh, fighting forever that I kind of want to use to, to tie out all this stuff together. Uh, so... Please uh, do reward me for my efforts of the last few weeks in trying to kind of pull all these different ideas together. Uh, this video has been drafted several times, and I believe this will be the final draft. Um, we'll see if that works. Like, subscribe, and watch uh, Die on the Table. It's a pretty cool video, music video thing if you haven't seen it already. Um, so let's get into it. PEDs in arm wrestling. RVJ. RVJ had some good thoughts on PEDs in arm wrestling. Uh, he's pretty angry about it. He does not like people like Levon standing on top and kind of low-key bullying the other arm wrestlers who haven't taken as many stacks and haven't gotten up to Levon's sort of artificial level. RVJ doesn't think that, that Levon has truly earned his place as the number one. Uh, I can see RVJ's perspective. And I admit, after Devin's uh, rematch loss to Levon, I was kind of tempted to go ahead and just agree 100% with RVJ. Because uh, I was mad. Um, but doing a little more reflecting, I had to be a little bit more intellectually honest than that. Uh, I'm not saying RVJ wasn't or that his opinion is wrong. I think he's probably right about a lot of things. But for me, I just had to take some time to put my emotion aside. And the conclusion that I've come to is that in the short term, I think freaks like Levon are pretty good for the sport of arm wrestling. We need these crazy figures at the front. And we need them to be spinning these narratives, not spinning, we need them to be kind of playing the main characters in these narratives, these David and Goliath narratives where Levon is the unclimbable mountain and then Devin is the, the guy trying to climb it. And, you know, it didn't work, uh, clearly. So I think a lot of arm wrestling fans are kind of starting to realize, hey, maybe this freakish spectacle thing isn't going to work out as well in the long term, uh, which is kind of what I think. I don't think it's going to work out as well in the long term, because what message are we sending to the next generations of arm wrestlers? These kids who walk up to Levon at his big events and ask for autographs, what are they thinking? Are they just thinking he's a cool big monster dude? Or maybe... Are they wondering if they could be him one day? That's a really valid question. Uh, because I would not want too many or even any kids to be thinking that they could be Levon Saganashvili. Levon is a cool dude, but the types of risks and sacrifices he has put on himself... I'm going to sound judgy here, but I don't think they are... Uh, good precedents to be setting for the human race. I just don't. I don't think that's where humanity is headed. And this is where we get into the Brian Johnson stuff. Don't die. That's his philosophy. Don't die. Basically, his, his thinking is that for much of human history, if not all of human history, we have been living in sort of a death culture. Not a death cult, a death culture. 
And that's a really weird term. What does that mean? Well, it basically means that we have been celebrating people who are willing to martyr themselves for a thing, be it a, a social cause or making a lot of money as a businessman, sacrificing your family and social life and everything just for that, that you know, that, that pinnacle of, of like wealth. Or maybe you're sacrificing your time and health as an artist just to, you know, push out your, your best work. Um, maybe you're sacrificing your lifespan or your health span to be someone like Levan Saganashvili. Uh, people martyr themselves for a lot of different things. And some of them are very noble and necessary things like... Uh, but there, there are necessary types of martyrdom, so I don't want you to think I'm talking about those kinds. I think those kinds are good, if there's such a thing in this situation. Um, but the kinds of martyrdom that Brian Johnson kind of is questioning are the, the less necessary kinds, the, the ones that I mentioned first. Brian Johnson thinks that in maybe 500 years from now, in the 25th century, we won't be living as much in that death culture anymore. We might be living in more of a don't die culture, which basically means there's, excuse me, there's going to be less reward for sacrificing big key aspects of your life. And the focus is going to be more on living longer. And when you live longer, the thing is, you're gonna get to all that other stuff you wanted to get to. You're gonna get to all that stuff that you were sacrificing your life for in the belief that you only had so long to live. Now, what if as a culture we realize maybe we don't have to die as soon as we thought or ever, you know? It's like not scientifically founded right now at all, but we're on the verge of being able to, to, to validate some of these suspicions that we're having about our ability to, to lengthen human life. So as arm wrestlers, I shouldn't call myself an arm wrestler, but as, our, as fans of arm wrestling or as an arm wrestling community, do we want to be living in the death culture where we celebrate people who die young for things that they don't need to die for? Or do we want to be moving toward the culture where instead of aspiring toward this tall peak and then plummeting into the abyss of death, we use Devin Larratt's philosophy of life being a wave and we let life be a series of small deaths and we maybe aren't hitting that highest peak. No, 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 because we know that if we go too fast, too hard toward that peak, we're, we're, we're gonna crash and burn. The engine can't sustain itself if it's having that high of a, of a peak, you know? It needs to increase gradually over years and years and years and years and years. And eventually, maybe when you're 100, like Devin has talked about, maybe when you're 100, you are able to finally reach that very high peak. But it's not by sacrificing fundamental parts of your life and your story. It's by being patient and being healthy and incorporating all the aspects that need to be incorporated. So don't die. Small deaths. Keep being reborn. It's like the continuous rebirth of human cells. You keep letting them die and be reborn. You don't, you don't put them to a point where they're so overtaxed that they all just die. They, they get to keep coming back. Um, so that's how I connect Brian Johnson with Devin. And furthermore, um, I think that Devin, uh, in the past several years, uh, as he's sort of like climbed up from the depression that he was in, he... Uh, has been at a crossroads, I believe. I, I don't mean to speak for him, but it just seems like he's been, a, been at a crossroads between this sort of don't die or small death philosophy and the highest peak philosophy. And I think he might have been a little bit torn between those two things. I think ultimately he chose the, the don't die. Um, and I don't want to say that he is 
thinking about Brian Johnson. I don't, I don't want to say he's thinking in those terms of don't die because I don't know if Devin even knows about Brian Johnson. But you get what I'm, what I'm dropping here. I, I think he kind of chose to expand and give himself to lots of different areas of life more than pursuing that high peak. He, he did peak pretty well, but he gave, he gave some to other places because he had to. He, he could not be all in like Levon was all in with the PEDs, with uh, eating, with lots of other lifestyle factors, I'm sure. He just, he chose not to be as all in as he could have been. And I think if he had chosen to be more all in, he might have had a better chance of beating Levon. But then maybe his lifespan and health span would have gone down. And I, I just, I don't think he was interested in, in taking that risk or making that sacrifice. Because look at everything he's got uh, to give yet. To the sport, to his family, to who knows what. I mean, Devin is giving so much to the world at this point, And it's only going to increase as time goes on. So I think it's wise of him to not be peaking so hard and save a little more of himself and kind of just keep riding that wave, you know? Uh, and now for Devin, maybe, maybe that wave is gonna trend downward as far as like peak arm wrestling strength goes. But in other ways, maybe it's gonna keep trending upward. And lastly, I want to talk about the little painting video that Devin did. Uh, I thought it was really cute, and I thought the painting was good. I really liked the slithering flames coming up from the bottom, and I liked the shape of the uh, Valkyrie's wings. Very cool shapes. I liked the composition of the whole thing. I liked how it led your eye to the different pieces pretty well. It was a good painting. You know, it's like a kind of a fourth grade whatever level painting, but you can tell that there's something there. He has a good mind for that kind of stuff. Good spatial intelligence, good uh, symbolic thinking. He, he's a very symbolic thinker, so that's like no news to us. But uh, I liked his thoughts too. He talked about Valhalla. He talked about how in Norse mythology, when you go to the afterlife, you live in this place where you just get to fight all day and you die or you, you, you rest at night and you get to feast and you get to just make merry and then the next day you're reborn or something like that and you, you do it all again, you, you do the fight again. And uh, that's kind of what arm wrestling is like in a way. Um, but it just, it struck me that in uh, Norse mythology, the, the real life warrior, the, the person who wants to go to Valhalla has to die, they have to perma die in order to go to this afterlife where you live forever, you know, around and around. Should you have to die to get there? I don't think so. I think that we could have a Valhalla on Earth. I think that we could get to that point as a species. I think it's possible. I think that it lines up very well with this don't die thing. And I imagine a paradise for arm wrestlers, for athletes of all kinds, for artists like me who want to give themselves to a thing. Um, we don't have to push so hard and martyr ourselves and make the ultimate sacrifice in order to have this eternal legacy, in order to be the big star in the sky. We don't need <laughs> to do that. We can actually slowly grow into immortality, into eternal life, into our legacy, into glory. It's a very interesting thought. We do it by taking care of ourselves. We do it by being close with our families and friends. We do it by being engaged in our communities. We do it by giving back that's a good life. So maybe it's just a good life that leads to eternal life. That's really all I've got. I hope you enjoyed it. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Take care.
get stronger. Oh god, this arm, don't, don't, don't even look. <laughs>